Hello everyone, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here, and let's play some RuneScape, shall we? Heathrun, Sir Theodore, Siloom, good evening, good to see you. Zago, how's it going? Well, everybody, we are here, standing on the Canifus Lodestone. You can see in the background, well, there's a beautiful memento. A timepiece honoring the fallen myarchy. Hey, Doctor, and good evening. Good to see you. And we are in the home stretch of River of Blood. Oh, I didn't know we could do that, Sir Theodore. We should do that. So, um, here's what happened. We went into a weird dream sequence, stuck in there, and then we had to fight Sophilon. We defeated Sophilon before he could kill Afarate, and this was when he transformed, and we had to fight several different iterations of, you know, a Dracon style fight and fighting different vires throughout until we defeated him and we mixed the extreme Guthic's balance potion. Now, Sophilon's still alive and he gave us some blood. We need to pour this thing into the well in the Paterdomus mausoleum and that's our next objective. Hey, Plague, what's going on, my friend? Good evening. Thanks for watching. So glad you enjoy that series. Hey, Token. Good to see you, my friend. So the altars are good. They overfill your prayer. Oh, that sounds really good. All right. So, like, let's just say, for example, I want to pay respects. Oh, they do. Look at that. 750. That's right. It did cause us to have a, a wild acid trip, but it didn't kill us. Whereas, um, it killed, uh, the bald monk guy, um, starts with a D, um, but Drizzle or Drevel or whatever his name was, um, Drizzle, yeah. I know, Siloam. So, I'm just thinking about this, and, you know, I noticed that you can pray here to get your prayer points by paying your respects to your buddies. Is this... How many places in the game that I've been to allow you to pray that aren't affiliated specifically with a deity? I don't think this is ostensibly a Ceridoman situation here, right? Like, I don't know who is giving me the prayer points or what supernatural power is, is behind that or if that's even how that works. You know what, Plague? I did stop, my friend. I did stop. I, um, I got distracted by other games. And I kind of want to play Celasta with... try to maybe get some DLC, but I really enjoy that game. They are a Ceridominist organization. Good point. Nick Man, good evening. Crispy, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, Plague. I hope you enjoy the game, my friend. Let me know um, if you get further past that, um, if it's worth proceeding. Oh, yeah, I, I should try some of those DLCs. So, prayer comes from the power of late souls, not the gods which is why you train it by burying bones, said Mather. Okay, so that's interesting, because I usually just get my prayer points back by going to an altar in a church or from one of these statues to a god. Okay. So anyway. Um, oh, nice. There's a story that kind of explains it. That's cool. 
Yes, we are at the end, and we need to go back to Paterdomus. So let's do it, everybody. I could probably use my normal staff for a bit, but I got the blister wood in case I need to switch back. Hey, hey, Fading, good evening, good to see you. I know, it is Drezzle absent, but um, Ivan is still inside, I hope. Fighting the good fight, as it were. This is a, a bad question. I'm just recollecting over the previous portion of the quest that I did. But was there an explanation as to why I did not die from Sophilon's poison? Oh, okay. I think I must have misread that because, like, I took it to... Maybe I was conflating some elements of the story, but I took it from one of the books that I read that the poison was only curable... Or that the, the angel, um, Aferite, said that she couldn't help Drezzle, that it was beyond even her skill to heal, and I thought she meant the poison, not his wounds. That's true. That's true. I'm a lot stronger than Drezzle was. That's a good point. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you for clearing that up. That makes sense. Yeah, and I think in my mind I was confusing it because, um, yes, it did say that, as Mather is saying, but then also when you read the book about um, the original member of the Seven that got turned into a vampire, he, the Avandus, was using, like, some kind of homeopathic remedy from a druid spirit, nature spirit or something. And so I thought that that was also treatment for the, the poison, but I think those aren't the same things. That was a treatment for vampiricism, not the, the poison. I've managed to make an even more potent version of a Guthic's Balak's Potion. This one should reliably convert vampires back into their original form, not turn them feral. I can't believe Drezzle's dead. Don't fall apart now, Ivan. I need you to perform the ritual. So this one, if we put this in there, then if um, Vanescula leads her armor army across, all of the vires that aren't OG vires that were transformed in like the factory down in the castle to transform humans into vampires will just turn back into humans instead of exploding in like the the red cloud or whatever we were dealing with the the, the viscous explosion Dude, Sanfu, sure, he certainly could have helped. All right, Ivan, I need to perform the ritual. Yes, I'm ready. Let's do this. Oh, great. So we get the best of both worlds. So we get all the vampires exploding that are from um, 
their world, their dimension. And then all the humans that have been changed will switch back. Man, that's a win-win. Pour the potion into the well. I'm right behind you. You better be, dude. We need you on this one. Let's see it. Here we go, everybody. Doctor Incompetent, do it! I'm doing it. There it goes. There's that ritual. Whoa! Wow. That was impressive. I was going to say the same thing. Those were actually really good and impressive effects right there. Resanctified indeed. You know who's going to be so happy to hear about this? Is uh, King Roly's advisor. He's going to basically crap his pants that uh, the vampires can't murder him on the watchtower. They really didn't, Asylum. That, um, that cutscene was redone recently by a generous endowment from Industrial Light and Magic. Let's hope this potion has the desired effect. I'll stay here, though you could tell me about the look on Vanescula's face when she finds out what we've done. Now, I don't... I'm wondering... Vanescula is probably too powerful to just explode outright, but we'll see. You know what I, I am picturing in my mind? Did you all ever see the movie from the 90s that was called, I believe it was called The Witches, and it had like Angelica Houston and Rowan Atkinson in it, and in, in that movie... Um, hey, Distro, thank you, my friend. Oh, I will visit that coffin. Good point. The, all of the witches, like, you know, have human forms, but they, they switch back into their, like, witch form whenever they want. Anyway, um, they make this potion to kill all of the witches, and all of the regular witches die, but the main witch is, like, not completely affected by the poison and, and doesn't die. That's kind of what I think would happen with Vanescula right there. Okay. Um, here we go. Let's go check out the coffin. But let's go see what's going on outside. Also, sorry. Just putting everything together in my mind. Did the salve also protect against werewolves, or was it only against vires? And is, if so, if the answer is yes on werewolves, is this guy, this werewolf that's in here, ruined? After the resanctification, Or does the resanctification only work on vires? I, I can't recall. No werewolf protection. All right. Explained in a novel? That's awesome. Not many games have, um, like, lore clarifications that require novels to suss out. All right. Hey, Anasig, here we go, dude. I hope you could find a better solution than turning all virus feral. That's not a solution. Um... Oh, okay, that's not what I need to say. What do I need to do? Oh, okay, go to the bridge. Gotcha. I thought maybe I'd have to check in with this dude. Oh, she's back down there. Okay.
Whatever you've done, I'll figure it out. All you've done is to delay the inevitable. Oh, you think so, huh? Enough. Oh my god, here's her army again, everybody. Whoa. Full force. This ends now. I will not let you hide behind your abominable river. It, the river is beautiful, alright? I think abominable is yeah, just a bit of hyperbole. So, you might turn the younger vampiric converts feral. But that magic should not affect my vire watch. Oh, it won't, Wink. You have my word. Are you so sure about that? Let's find out, shall we? They're expendable. Ha ha ha. Vires. Let's watch. Oh, look at that. He's got a hat. Freedom indeed. What have you done? How? Sacrilege. <laughs> Only in this game could you have a situation where there is an incredibly powerful pureblood vampire calling the transformation of what was once human beings from vampire form into human form sacrilege. Religion to who? Unbelievable. This isn't an act of war. It's an atrocity. You cannot just wash vampirism. Ooh. That's true. That's true. She's laying down some, like, more contemporary claims about us. Um, not necessarily whitewashing, but, like, anthropomorph eyes washed like anthropomorph washing human washing their entire species away i mean there there is like maybe something to that but be except for the fact that they were originally human beings i know exactly exactly sir theodore like it's she acts as if it's her divine right to take humans and turn them into virus whenever we want, and if we resist that divine right, it's sacrilege, atrocity, washing vampirism away. We're not a stain to be cleansed. No, you can be what you want to be, but, you know, those were just regular people. So couldn't I have the argument on the other side? You can't wash humanity away we're not cattle to be converted, you know, and then we have this kind of, like, bit of a logical loophole here. You have forced us to defend ourselves, Vanescula. You did this. Send as many vires across as you wish. Send them all! <laughs> oh, look! First of all, um, I didn't see that Aonisig was back here, that he, like, mustered up the courage to actually get onto the bridge, which I'm impressed with. But now look how ballsy he got. He's like, yeah, send them all over. Like, once he's had visual confirmation that the sanctification of the salve has worked, he's getting real chesty about it. He was not this way a moment ago. It's a good flip-flop from him. It's over, Vanescula. Stand down. We could talk this over peacefully. You reduce my vampires to humans and want to, quote, talk this over? No, no. I am unavailable for chit-chat. Okay, so... You might think you're unavailable for chit-chat. However, I do know a little bit of lunar magic, and I'm wondering if I can contact you against your will with a little spell that I have. It's called the Lunar Telephone. <laughs> I can see why, Sir Theodore. I can see why. I am resolved now. You have given me the taste for battle. An eagerness to see your head proudly on a pike, perhaps. That's awesome. I really hope 
that at, that my accomplishments in life can at, at some point inspire someone with such vitriol that they want my head on a pike actively. Not just for some kind of like idle daydream, but really visceral desire for a decapitated decoration. Yeah, which pike do you have in mind? Who, who was the craftsperson of this pike? Let us see what your taint will do to... Oh, to my werewolves. Well, good. I just posed this question, wondering about the werewolves. We're going to find out about the werewolves. Now, I think we discussed this before. But werewolves, as you guys were explaining, in Gilinor are not people who were once humans who were in, like bit by a you know a lycanthrope and turned into werewolves but they're just werewolves that can be humans or werewolves and, and always already were that way werewolves attack let's find out they're like uh I don't think so I said attack you ignorant mutts sick them oh whoa Boy, she just accused us of a little, uh, you know, hegemonic racism, speciesism. Now she's laying it on pretty thickly here. Oh, God, I forgot about this poor werewolf from the party who has this, like, cone of shame with spikes. I mean, this guy has insubordination written all over his cone. I command you to attack. Claim your new territory. Not today, Vire. Yep, I knew it. I knew it would be Cone of Shame that would speak out. You know, the Cone, the convenience of the Cone of Shame went on that werewolf who is speaking for other werewolves is that it acts as a megaphone. It really projects his voice so that all the other werewolves can hear his decision and and be lockstep, you know? Because you didn't want that one werewolf to be like, I'm going in. His voice is, is amplified by that cone, and everyone, all the other werewolves hear it. It is the megaphone of shame, like... They didn't think that that would be a consequence of that torture or shaming device, that it would act as a um, rallying point for the werewolves in their kind of little coup here. But it's it's pretty um, it's pretty breathtaking to watch. I am Lady Vanescula Dracon, not some common vire. You will address me appropriately, and you will obey me. I'm afraid we differ there, my lady. We smell the fall of House Dracon on the wind, and our freedom with it. I don't, you know, I was going to say I don't really smell that, but they're wolves. They smell much better than I do, and I really need to say that to my enemies more often. If they, you know, threaten me in any way, you just say I smell the fall of House and then insert name here on the wind really, really pop somebody's balloon. This will not stand. You hear me? This aggression will not stand. Uh, she's quoting the dude. It's awesome. It will not stand at all. I mean, I see them standing right there, actually. Vanescula, stop. See reason. Your army is falling apart before you. No. You think I'll lick my wounds like these dogs? Whoa. She came again with the anti-dog rhetoric. I mean, she's got a whole book filled with pejorative dog terms that she can use, you know, at, at a moment's notice to disparage the werewolves. She's really upset, so she's using them all. 
or I'll twirl my cape and disappear into the night. And that's a little bit of like on the nose, stereotypical, you know, vampire canon that she's kind of like speaking out against. She's special. The fate of my race, my people, my friends, it all depends on this moment. Across the river is life. To turn back is death. I'm, I'm trying to follow her on this. Why is across the river life and turning back death? Just because the blood tastes better across the river? But you have like you've set up a feeder system for your vampires on this side of the river. It seems like it might not be as delicious, but that's what she says. They suck the blood out of it, but I, I seem to, I feel like I saw maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me, but in Castle Dracon there were many gold cylindrical canisters filled with blood. So they got lots of blood. They got plenty of blood. It's just not like, you know, it's like off-brand blood and they want the, you know, the brand name stuff. I get it. I was thinking the same thing. Like, that's never in the playbook that they could go back to Vampirium. So, Fire Mage, good evening. The humans are not enough, and Hamalchemy isn't enough. Hermie, good evening. Good to see you. It is. We thought peak blood was just a, a myth, you know, that was wildly thrown around by conspiracy, conspiracy theorists, but peak blood is a real thing. No, she doesn't want to go back. She does. Interestingly, let me just throw this out here. I don't know if this is ever going to be a consideration. But she's got the Thanos solution right here, right? Like, the problem is, there's too many mouths to feed. So... Just send your vires at the salve and have all the them turn back into humans that you can drain and you have less vires to feed and maybe the equilibrium of your blood-based economy is stabilized. Yeah, there won't be as many vires, but you know, you can you can thin your own herd with the man like maybe this was a blessing in disguise for their situation. That's true. That's true. Now, the only thing I will say about it, though, just as I'm thinking through it, even if the humans attacked and, you know, the, the vampires are in a bit of disarray right now, I don't think the humans would win coming across the salve into Mauritania, attacking the vampires, especially with Vanescula still there. I think they'd still lose. Um, they don't have enough weapons that could hurt them. Why is it that they don't burn the blisterwood tree? Like, destroy it completely? It seems like if Vanescula just destroyed the tree, then there'd be no means of killing the, the more, you know, higher level vampires, I should, you know, as a crude way of putting it. And they could at least defend themselves against most human incursion. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a good point, um, Sir Theodore, that maybe... Oh, they couldn't kill the tree? They were only able to, like, put those chains on it and weaken it? Okay, well... Yeah, I mean, she ex overextended by giving me access to the tree to kill her brother which also gave me you know perhaps the means to fight them off but um so 
I think it could be the case that, yeah, you're right. Like, maybe there is a bit of, you know, I don't want to say colonialism, but, like, she just has, like, manifest destiny on her mind and wants to just come over here and is really, really um, doing some, like, intellectual gymnastics to justify her war that she wants to start. I do not lack conviction. Unlike my brother, my resolve is strong. His resolve was pretty strong. It was just like he had a different goal. You may have backed me against a wall, but I am not toothless. That'd be pretty bad for a vampire. The toothless vampire is not a good vampire. Oh, Saphalon time. Weird. Kill this priest. Let's see how your protections work without him. Um, Ivan? Run away. Vanescula. Ooh, he turned into Sophilon right in your face. Now we're talking. Look at that incredibly tall, Icene blood. Bam. Sophilon, what are you? No. You cannot do this to me. I demand you change back. This isn't about you, Vanescula. I won't kill my friends. I know I agreed to help your people, but Dr. Incompetent has shown me that there's another way. I understand. Oh, his mom's here. What you were going through. Better than I did before. Better than I did when we talked in the castle. When I was human, when I thought I was human, I believed that vampires were beasts led by their bellies. And it's true, the hunger is terrifying, all-encompassing. But that isn't what drives you, is it? The euphoria I felt wasn't the blood in my throat. I saw something very different. A mountain of lives, mortals, and me at the top of it. Nobody above me, everyone else below. So this is what Sir Theodore was mentioning before then. That it's not just bloodlust for the hunger. That she's dominated by the will to power. Okay. You know, with the will to power, Nietzsche would say, it's human, all too human. But in this case, it's vire, all too vire. The thrill came from being at the summit of knowing that all life fed me. It became an intense joy. I felt safe, like I was unbeatable. I felt like I was the culmination of everything. But then I heard the cries of those below me. I saw the fear in their eyes when they looked up. They were terrified of me. You know that intense joy and loneliness, don't you? That's why you were set on an alliance with Mistelin. Hey, Harambes, how's it going, my friend? Thanks for the prime sub, I appreciate that. But it won't work, Vanescula. You may sign treaties and alliances, but nothing will have changed. You will still be alone on that mountain, and they will look at you with as much fear as before. Stop this. Step away from it all. Look to your own people and stop asserting yourself on the world. Yeah, I don't know what the alliance that Sophilon is discussing here is either. I'm wondering if the suggestion is her alliance was a.k.a. um... Mistelin just bends over and, like, bends the knee, basically, to them and allows them to every once in a while tithe while they dominate. And that's the, quote, alliance, which is just, like, a position of servitude and, and complete fealty to her. Right, Zago's got it. That's what I'm thinking, Zago. 
Right, right. It's not an alliance. It's a agreement that will be able to tithe you and you won't ever fight back. I think the term that she's looking for is unconditional surrender. Listen to my son, Lady Vanescula. You are not like your brother, Lower Neil. There is light in you. Even I can sense that. Is there light in her? I'm not really sensing it, especially recently. She's kind of behaving like a, you know, like there's a little bit of Kylo Ren, you know, spoiled brat coming out here. You've always been genuine, even when we doubted you. I believe that we can all live together, somehow. And the responsibility for your people doesn't have to sit with just you, Vanescula. You have me. Yeah, Mather, I think that's right. Hermie, I'm with you. Harambes, that's awesome, my friend. I'm doing great. I hope you're well. I'm glad you enjoy the content and find it relaxing. That's awesome. I think so. See, Zago, I'm with you. Like, before this quest, and actually before Vanescula bit Sophilon, I was actually okay with her. Like, she seemed pretty reasonable all things considered, for the most part, when we were working together. Then, when there was, like, the big reveal, I was, like, still holding out hope that Hemalchemy was not just a red herring, but it was. And once I heard her real plans, and then everything since, when she's... has, It's kind of, um... gone downhill. But you're right. Maybe... She is, Zago, and I think, like, um, maybe if we take more meaning. Oh, that's awesome, my friend. Yeah, Subnautica is a fantastic game. Maybe if we take the point that Sophilon is making here about how Vanescula feels with the the responsibility of being in charge of all of her people and everyone looking up to her and all of that duty coupled with maybe some kind of like I don't I don't hesitate the word uh, to use the word genetic but some kind of like predisposition for not just bloodlust but you know domination will to power Maybe some megalomania, um, like, you know, megalomania. And so she's trying to, like, manage that. And he's saying, look, I know how that feels. Um, but you gotta kind of put that aside for a moment to see the big picture. Maybe. Maybe. I'm being very generous as I kind of, like, operate here. And he's offering, he's saying the responsibility for your people doesn't have to sit with just you, you have me. What are you people doing? Have you lost your minds? We should finish her off now, all of them. Okay, well, Aonisig is like, isn't he supposed to be the advisor? He's like the worst negotiator in history. I can see where he's coming from, but that's kind of like an inside voice moment. You don't really speak that at the um, at the brokering table, you know. You kind of you want to keep that one back. No, there's been enough bloodshed in these lands. They are not your lands. <laughs> I love it, Herbie. It is true. It is true that like. You think about Aonisig right here for a moment. He's the the lead advisor to, um, and these are your words. I'm not, uh, maybe I'm not characterizing for everybody, but 
King Roly is kind of viewed to be a pretty bad ruler. And if you have a bad ruler, generally the advisor is probably pretty bad too. So he's like not really the best. He's standing here. I don't even know how he got invited to this little powwow that we're having. Um, he's the Archbishop of Varric. Okay, so he's the Archbishop, he's the advisor. But he's standing at this council meeting, and in the middle is an Icene Queen. Next to that is a human Icene hybrid who was turned into a super vampire. And then in front of him is a millennia old pure blood vire. And he thinks he's calling shots? Any shots? Well, see, Mather, that's right. Remember, like, King Roly was so upset with Aeonisig that he sent him into the field so that he would make decisions based on um, empirical data as opposed to just conjecture that he got while sitting safely in the throne room. Oh. Do you mean... Oh, nice. Harambe's 500 is sweet, my friend. You're making good progress. So, are you guys talking about the people that we saw in the upper room of Paterdomus that were like the Zamorakians and the Ceredominists who were meeting together that you think that Aeonisig is involved in that? Nor are they yours, not anymore. I make no claim over them, but they can be shared. Build your society of humans and vampires here, Vanescula. Okay, so again, you guys are mentioning that um, the ending of this quest is a little bit too quick, perhaps. This statement from the, the player character right here is pretty unbelievable. Now, I'm, I'm not xenophobic, um, but like with vampires, if the vampires are only going to eat human blood. That's it. That's all they're going to live on. I don't really think that's like a society of humans and vampires is a thing. Like, that doesn't seem like that's going to work. And maybe I'm being a jerk, you know, um, and being too, like, pro-human, um, but I, I don't see that happening. Like, are we just going to accept that a few humans die every month to the vampires? Or that you just get bit and you don't die, but you just have to get drained a little bit? Yeah, we do have blood banks. But I don't know about you. Um, the blood banks in America are optional. They're not mandatory. I think that, um,
I hear what you're saying, and I hear it, and it could be, um, let me just say two things. Number one, um, what of the vampires in this quest series have you seen that makes you feel like there's any good in any of them? that we should share land and donate our blood to them. Like, what have they exhibited or demonstrated beyond basically running concentration camps in Meyerditch and Berderat? Like, where, where would be the goodwill that would m inspire or motivate any desire to negotiate? I I'm like... If, if they were good underneath it all, but they just had to have blood, okay, fine. But I don't, I never once saw like a moment where I was like, this fire's okay. Like, we could get along, you know. So, number one, I've never seen them be good or redeemable in any sense. And number two, you're saying to, like, everybody in Gilinor, we're going to create this community in Mauritania. And if you live there, you have to give blood every once in a while to the vampires that you're going to be living next to, um, who have a, a history of, uh, you know, enslavement of humans. Which, what humans in Gilinor would, would agree to that? would be like, you're right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna live over there. And it seems unfortunate, like, you lose the lottery if you're on this side of the south. It seems to me, and I, I, this is being way too exclusionist, I get it, with the information I have, no, I don't think we eradicate the virus. Here's my solution. I don't think the virus were ever supposed to be on Gilinor. I think Zeros screwed up and screwed everybody by bringing them here. And they should be back in Vampirium, their own dimension. I, I don't... This is... It's like... I don't know. Maybe. To build a wall, exactly. We do need a wall, don't we? Anyway, anyway, it's just, it's fun to just think about this. But, like, um, we are really bending over backward to be, like, the good guys here. Oh, wait a minute. And shouldn't we add on, didn't the virus at one point also kill all of the Icene? Isn't that something on their doorstep, too? Not like... I don't know if the ice... They, they look like angels, so I'm just, like, thinking that they were good. I don't know if the ice scene were actually good or not, but they seem like they're pretty okay. No, no, no. I get it that, like, everybody was brought to Gilinor through the portal by, like, Guthix or whomever. Like, I understand that. Um, but the other species that are on Gilinor, like the dwarves and the elves and the gnomes and the humans, they seem to, like, get along a little bit better than the vampires and there's people or there's members of those communities who I would consider to be of like high moral character where I haven't met one in the vampire community dude I, I hear you but um 
there are, I mean, like, first of all, the the Dorkashan or whatever, the underground goblins are cool. And then, you know, Wartface and Bentnose are at least funny. Like, anyway, I'm just being biased. Okay. And build it as equals, not with fear underlying it all. Exactly. Tabby, good evening. They do, right? Like, some of them are cool. Like the big chompy guy. That guy is kind of cool. I've worked I've worked together with Big Chompy Guy many times. He he gave me a bow and taught me to cook. I've never had a, a profitable, you know, situation with these virus. Excuse me, thank you. You think the humans wouldn't rise against us? And my vires? You can only rise against your enemies, Vanescular. It's not going to be easy, but you don't strike me as the type to give in so readily. Oh, wow. Cool, Sir Theodore. I need to, uh, I can't wait to watch that. I've been watching, um, kind of, I'm taping all of the Olympics and watching it the day after. Yeah. You got a point, Tabby. It appears I'm left with little choice in the face of all this gross optimism. I will not let my people die. Know that. And I shall not forget this day. You have damaged my people in ways you cannot comprehend. She seems like incredibly possessive of the... And calling her people... First of all, I don't know if people's the right word to use there. But anyway, that's fine. Her people... The virus that were humans that were transformed. Like, there's no way back for that. Um... She's really not budging on that. But I'm willing to discuss terms of an alliance. If it fails, I'll just have you all killed. Okay. What say you, King's Advisor? If you still wish for war, then you'll have to go through me. By all means, strike me down. Make an enemy of the Iceene, too. I'm sure Sarah Doman would understand. So I've been thoroughly enjoying all these vampire quests. They're they're one of my favorite quest lines in the game. But I don't understand Aferate right here. Wasn't Aferate just imprisoned in Castle Dracon for hundreds of years? And weren't all of her people wiped out for vampires? And wasn't her son just killed and turned into a vampire by the vampires? And she's like gonna put her life on the line for them? Why? What, what did they do for her ever that was ever good? Is she just like so good, so pure, that she forgives everyone? I guess, so she's tired. Yeah, I mean... She doesn't want any more fighting. That I understand. But she says, I don't want any more fighting. So if you fight, I'm gonna fight you. And die... To make Sarah Doman angry, I... 
Correct. Correct. And it seems like I thought b that her refusal to act before would inspire her to have more of a backbone in this situation. Maybe funny. No, I like the quest. I just don't understand. Like, I'm just trying to figure out the motivations of these characters. I, I'm trying to get my head into the space where, like, if I, if all of my people, my husband, my friends, family, were all killed by a murderous race of vampires, and I was imprisoned for centuries by a vampire, that, it wouldn't be the first people that I would try to help. But maybe it's, that just shows a flaw in my own character. Anyway, let's just say that she can do what she wants. I uh, think I should go and advise the king. Good man. Now, Lady Vanescula, we have much to discuss. Fine, I'll signal the army to retreat back to Darkmire. There is one final thing I wish to discuss with Dr. Incompetent, and then I shall join you both at Castle Dracon. All right, let's see. It's true. It's true. It's it's a lot of holes to consider. It's a lot of threads that you have to keep in line. And there's many, many cooks in the kitchen, many different authors. Um, it's just like... Having done so many quests for RuneScape over the years, most of the bigger quest arcs line up. Like, the pieces fall into place for the most part. Don't say anything. Let me talk for a moment. I want you to listen. Years ago, thousands of years ago, my family wasn't in the position we are now. We had lost battles against the other houses. We were weak. Our loss was against Lord Jovkai and his sycophants. A narrow loss, but a loss nonetheless. We invited him and his family to our camp to discuss reparations. We prepared a meal. We prepared riches. Such was the custom, but when he arrived, Lord Jovkai had brought his own banquet. He sat at the head of our table and beckoned us to sit. Meals were placed in front of us. I looked around at my brothers. We ate without joy. I could eat nothing. Lord Jovkai watched us. Oh, uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, Tabby. I mean, but I think, you know, everybody's got their own... Her guilt could be affecting her more than um, I know about. Now... They're talking about something right here. They're talking about a vampire feast. Do vampires eat like, are they just... What is their feast? Is it just, like, human arms and legs? Or do they eat, like, regular food, but they also just drink blood? I think, like, um... Couldn't they just, like... It seems like they could have just ended it with... Vanescula seeing that the salve destroyed her vires and turned them back into humans and saying, you know, we need to fall back and, um, like, replan or something or, like, you know, we'll be back. or uh, And she's here in 
Mauritania with the vampires not crossing and like, you know, re-strategizing or whatever, and then we're on the other side. That would have been reasonable. I don't know why all the other stuff had to happen. Then he filled his cup with wine again and stood up. He told us that this was it. This was to be our reparations. We would be strangers in our own home, dining from his scraps. So they do eat human food. And that must be part of the acculturation when they came through from Vampirium to Gilinor was that they started enjoying, you know, French cuisine and wine and stuff like that. But they also have blood, which really sustains them. I suppose. He walked over to me, placing the cup in front of me, and forced me to drink it. I had to. His blade was at my back. Once the meal was finished, Lord Jovkai made me wash the plates like some disobedient child, Vanescula Dracon tending to tables. So I washed Lord Jovkai's cup in slow poison. Well, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be satisfying, um, because like, but just based on what you're describing, there isn't an end to this. Like, they needed to do more, or there hasn't been another quest in this line, but it needs to happen or something. So it doesn't look like we're going to get a nice tidy resolution. It's not like you know, um, a Farate like rips Vanescula in half or something like that, and then brings the sun back to Mauritania with her Icene magic and Meyerditch and Berderot are like transformed back into prosperous towns. Like that's the ending I want. I'm not going to get that. Okay, so Lord Jovkai is getting poisoned. So you can poison vampires. Mental note. Every time he took a sip from the cup, he grew more ill, and he loved to drink. Yeah, Toothless was good, and um, we get the idea that you can poison, so he's like, she's, you know, doing the low-down dirty poisoning. Though he was tended to, he died less than a year later. We did not lose another battle after that meal. There was a fire in all of us. We would never eat scraps again. What's this got to do with me? You made me lose this battle today. So if you ever make me feel like a stranger in my own home, I will be the slow poison in your cup. Okay? Um, so she's just... She wants to have a little chat so she can threaten me. It's great. Enjoy this victory. This battle was yours. You did well. Relish it. I, First of all, I am relishing it. I like relish. Um, yeah, exactly. Tough but fair, you know. Okay. All right. Mental note. Never drink from a cup again. And when the dust falls on all of this, you should join me at Castle Dracon so we can share a meal. Um, what, what do you mean, Sheremio? It'll be my treat. Oh, thanks. It sounds good. Now run along. I suppose you'd best report back to your masters of your victory over the, quote, vampire menace. It's a good trick.
I need to talk to Roly. All right. Let's talk to the guy. So we did kind of win. I mean, she has to accept the fact that the salve has been completely... Um, turned against them. It is a good trick. Turn it into bats. I can do that if I use the uh, Dracon Medallion. <laughs> yes, yes, Plague. I did just get a date, didn't I? She's like, here, drink from this cup. Oh, the coffin, right. Let me go see that, but do I need to do it before I talk to uh, King Roll? Here's a question. Well, I'm going to go back and do this, and you guys think about this. What if I'm just throwing it out there? Okay, I'm going to do it. What if I go to the date with Vanescula where she wants to have a, me uh, a meal at Castle Dracon? And as I come in, I have people with me who set up tables and set up a feast. And I actually have her sit at my table and eat the food that I brought. Like, do you think she would get, you know, the position I'm placing her in there? Like the reference to Job Kai. Okay, okay. Thank you. I'll do it. Yeah, exactly, Fading. Not only make her do the dishes, but also, like, just totally let her poison the cup. And then when I go to drink from the cup, all I'm drinking is the, like, Supreme Guthic's Balance Potion. Ah, delicious. No poison can hurt me. I notice you've switched to a Supreme Guthic's Balance Potion only diet. Well played. Right, Hermie. Or, you know, like Prince Wesley, I can build up a resistance to whatever poison. Iocane powder. And, like, I just have us both drink it. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, get the immunity. Exactly, right? Her little trick doesn't work. I can't hear anything. Whatever was in here isn't moving anymore. I think it might be dead. Or gone, right? It could be empty. Not moving around anymore, so it was banging, banging, banging. I told you, I told you, Nick Man, there's no way I was going to be able to do it in 10 or 15 minutes. But tell me, I mean, didn't you think that the ending to that quest? So Avandus was banging around. This is the resting place. So... I thought, though, Avandus has a tomb on the other side of the salve, so you're saying he was able to, like... Oh, because didn't he say in his journal that he was just going to walk across the river and let himself get exploded? But you're saying he didn't explode, and he made it here. And then... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I hope that, like, I'm not the only one, right, who found the the way that that quest wrapped up and the dialogue of Safalon Afarate, the player character, 
and Venescula to be surprising, in different ways at different times. Yes, yes, you gotta write a 10-page essay, and I've got a multiple-choice quiz. Oh, Veliov has some more conversation over by the uh, Mauritania Meyer Key. Memora, uh, what should we call it? Memorial Sundial? So, one last thing, and I appreciate everyone's patience as I'm sussing through all of this. Do you all remember, um, this was a few years ago when it wasn't West Nile virus, it was the Zika virus. Um, it was the, it followed West Nile. And, like, the Zika virus was, you know, kind of proliferating and there was a lot of concern about it. And there was a discussion in the scientific community on whether or not we should just genetically destroy mosquitoes and make them eventually go extinct like because mosquitoes just you know transmit too many diseases and we could like modify their genome to make them sterile so that progressively over the generations they would just die out and you know, it seems like a kind of a scary science fiction proposal, but they had the technology to, to do that, you know. And my point is, I, I don't, number one, I don't care for mosquitoes. And when I heard about that, there is a scary fact of like, what if that disrupts the food chain in some way? And, you know, we all die as a result. But I was like, yeah. I'm fine with no mosquitoes anywhere. And I think it's like the same thing with the vampires. Like, I don't think so. I just don't think so. Like, there's no... There's no redeemable member of their community that I've met. I've read their literature. I've talked to them. Vanescula is the only... Ugh you know, one that I have even been able to carry on a reasonable conversation with. I do. But the point is, there's no argument that they can make for not eating blood that's not human. Like, you can eat other blood, you just don't think it tastes good. You So it's like, you could avoid killing people, but they just won't. And, like, that's just, that's a deal breaker. The bodyguard, that's true, Mather. That bodyguard that died was pretty cool um, in a sense of, like, helping us out and working with us to further Vanescula's plot to murder her brother. Yes. I guess if we count Saphalon as a vampire, you know, maybe. But he Saphalon is such an odd bird. I've never really been able to figure that guy out. All right. Do you have a report from the front lines? I'm happy to report the Vanescula has retreated her army back to Darkmire. A formative alliance is in effect. Oh, so he no longer is vampire in any way, Sir Theodore? Because he was like, Sophilon for a moment there was the triple threat. He was human vampire I seen, like unstoppable. So now he's just back to being hybrid between I seen and human. 
So my scouts inform me, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this alliance. Humans, vampires, and now an I seen all working together. And I don't, yeah, I agree, Sir Theodore, this isn't an alliance, and there isn't any working together. It's just an agreement that we don't have a war. But I, unless I go back and investigate, I don't see any collaboration or any working together or any open negotiation at all. This is just like, we won't fight for right now kind of agreement. It's better than them fighting, killing, and eating each other. And not invading my kingdom, too. Still, we shall have to keep a close eye on how this develops. To this end, I have ordered Aonisig to ask as an ambassador for Mistelin. <laughs> yes, it's a cease biting. Now, the other thing, too. Let me just throw this out there. Hey, RJ, what's up, my friend? Thanks for subscribing. What about Berderot and Meyerditch? Is that just back to status quo, business as usual? Like, those people are still getting the, the short end of the stick here. Like, how... The only thing that, like, Mistelin doesn't get invaded, so they're cool. But everybody in Mauritania is still screwed. <laughs> he made Aonisig the ambassador for Mistelid. That's a great choice. Um, he shall be my eyes and ears in Mauritania. Or Hollowvale. Or whatever they end up deciding to call that place this time. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Do you think that's the reason, Nick Man? That would be so funny if it was just like too much work. So they were like, ah, these people suffer eternally. So, the funny thing is, I could see, they, they can't do it, but if they would just, like, let the community, you know, mod it, like, open source it or something, and, you know, people could vote on what outcome, I, it, it'd be really difficult. All right, um, I'm pretty sure he, I'm sure he enjoyed that news. We've had words. He was starting to presume too much about his position, king's advisor in spiritual matters, as if I don't get my ear bent enough by my wife. Aw, oh, she made a garden just for you, buddy. It didn't work very well. Yeah, I could see that. Anyway, as I understand it, you are once again pivotal to the events of the day. As such, it's only right to reward you for your efforts. Boom. River of blood. Whoa, what was that musical effect? What just happened? Does that... Does that music happen when you complete a quest normally? That was like super ominous. Yeah, it was scary. It stopped it stopped the jovial Varric music. Everything just went silent and there was this really creepy like organ chords that chimed out. Cool, unique music. Hey, hey, Kiva, good evening, or good morning. Thank you, my friend. Go talk to Vanescula. Okay, look at all this experience. Reforged, augmentable sun spear. Oh, that's right. I'm not using the uh, Blisterwood staff. I've got the sun spear, baby. 
talk to Vanescula on Castle Dracon's roof to learn the secrets of Hamalchemical Blood Essences. Couple of keys. Cool. Cool. Hey, mining went up. I'll take it. Um, do I have the skills to unlock invention, or what am I missing for that? Don't you need 80 in a bunch of things for invention? 80 crafting, 80 divination. Okay. Uh, ah. Darn. I was really hoping that I'd... 76 crafting, I wouldn't have to do divination again. That's not bad. All right, fine. Well, um, I can do crafting, I guess, if I want to... I can't do divination. We're getting close, people. Look at that. 77. We are going to make it. Hit me. Let's get one of them there. Okay, well, we'll get close. Seventy-eight, baby. I'm pretty sure that uh, crafting is one of those skills I can just throw money at, right? Like I could just cut a bunch of gems or something. Iron Man moment. Okay. So, let's do a couple of things. Let's go talk to Velioff. Tell him the good news. We managed to avoid having Ivan killed. And we re-sanctified the salve. Velioff, you should know. Saphalon is sort of back. He's uh, still a vampire, but he's just like his old self. I discovered a serum that diminishes vampiric bloodlust. Dot, dot, dot. He's helping to oversee bringing peace to Meyerditch and Darkmire with the help of Aferite, Aeonasig, and Vanescula. He's still having his ear bent by that harpy. After what she did to him, to us... I think maybe I should do something about this. I think you should. Wait, you're not going to try and kill her, are you? The peace we've brokered is quite new and fragile. What? No, of course not. He just could do with an old friend talking in his other ear is all. Maybe I can make him see sense. Besides, he could do with a proper human advisor. Especially from what I've heard about this Aeonisig fool. Whoa, everybody's throwing Aeonisig under the bus here. Phew, yeah. That sounds like a good idea. Besides, our work here is done. For now. Farewell, old friend. Whoa. Achievement complete. Meyer key in memoriam. He's gone. I know. You know, it's funny, he is the based one, like, and throughout that whole uh, vampire quest line, Meyer Key quest line, I really thought he was off his rocker and just too close-minded. He was seeing sense all along. He knew. Hashtag Velioff knew. Okay. Um... Castle Dracon, sure.
Whoa, look at this party. Oh, Veliof is here now. He is in the other ear. Do you know how incredible... Hermie, they need more than chairs. I was just going to talk about this. This is like the most intimidating negotiation area. Can you imagine trying to talk to somebody about a peace deal when you come up to a spiral staircase in a ring of blood and spikes that is by a throne that's surrounded by a moat of blood with decanters of blood on each side? Hey, Jimmy John, what's up, my friend? Good evening. That's awesome, my friend. Thanks for watching. I mean, this is like the m scariest place possible. Oh, look, um, Sophilon's got his sickle. He's like, I didn't forget my sickle. Well met, Dr. Incompetent. You seem to be a bit more cheerful. I thought I'd lost my friend here. First to death, then to vampiris uh, vampirism, but no. That's Safalon right there, just as he's always been. That bad, huh? Ha, actually, this one's got a lot better at making decisions. Maybe because he's more willing to listen to me these days. But Ferrite is a good influence on him, too. Exactly, Nick Man. Jimmy, I have not yet tried old school, but I, you know, I probably will at some point. I wish he'd listen to me more and just eat the lot of you. She's got a real good sense of humor about all this. I'm even starting to get used to that one. Plus, someone has to keep an eye on her. Aw, dear sweet Velioff. Are you sure you're not just developing a crush on me? How are the citizens of Meyerditch taking to this new arrangement? It's tough going, but they trust me. They know I was with the Meyerkey. We have a number of projects in the works to renovate the slums, though it will be years before we see any real progress. Okay, so they are trying to make it better. Awesome. Awesome, John. Oh, okay, Zago, cool. In the meantime, we're working to reunite families, treat the sick and wounded and ensure everyone has enough food and water. Sounds like you got a lot on your plate. Good luck with it all. Actually, that's the problem. There isn't enough on the plate. The, the people are starving. Okay. Um, hi, buddy. How are you finding your new role as an ambassador for Varric? Oh, this is pretty funny for Ayana Sig, though, because... <laughs> exactly, Herbie. Like... King Roly sends Aonisig out to be the ambassador, and he's like, all right, fine, it can't be that bad. And he's already, like, kicking and screaming about having to leave the Kush throne room um, in Varric, and this is where he has to go. My new role? This is a punishment, not a promotion. I hate it here. Perhaps it'll give you a new perspective on the issues Mauritania now faces. This is true. Like, if there's any way for people of Mauritania to get some justice or some, you know, improved conditions, it's by forcing Aonisig to live among them. Indeed. Though I may not be happy, I shall do my utmost to make the situation work. If for no other reason, to get back into the king's good graces. Maybe then he'll let me back home. He's like, I gotta really knock this one out of the park. Professionally, so I can, uh leave this hellhole. Things have been such a whirlwind since my escape that I have not had the chance to thank you. 
You defeated Dracon and gave me back my freedom. You returned my son to me and you've been pivotal in bringing about this alliance. I am forever in your debt, though I shall be needed here to advise Sophilon and help rebuild this place. Should you ever need my assistance, you need only ask. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Queen of Ferrite. No, still not Queen. I dare not assume that mantle again. This is not the kingdom I used to rule. It's something so much worse. I still can't believe you agreed to this, to being turned into the very thing you were fighting. I made a lot of bad decisions. I can see that now. I've been selfish and reckless. I wanted to try to help everyone, but in doing so, I've lost many friends. He did, many times, Sir Theodore. He was, he was staunchly quoting the, um, you know, edicts of Guthics or whatever. Misquoting or whatever. Um, well, I forgive you. I appreciate that. It gives me hope that others will too. Please don't be too harsh on him. I seen emotions often run hot. If he'd had a parent there to teach him these things when he was young, he might have had more control over himself. That is my fault. Okay. So, a ferrite is a blame taker. It's true that I am uniquely positioned to empathize with human, vampire, and Icene alike. In time, I hope both populations will grow to trust me. So he just means humans, he just mentioned three populations, but he means just humans and vampire because Icene, there's only his mom, right? The blood stores that Venescula retrieved from Vampirium are already half depleted. Yes, well, like they say, an army marches on its stomach. I'm telling you, just send the virus that were humans at the south and reduce the amount of blood that you need. Let them be humans. It actually provides more blood for you for tithing. We solve the problem. Thankfully, many of the younger convertees are willingly taking the cure. So the store should suffice to keep the trueborns fed. Oh, okay, so people are taking the cure. They don't even need to go to the south. So some of them are turning back. Getting them to take the cure is a bigger ask. The very idea that vamp vampirism is a disease is offensive to us. Yeah, I don't get um, this point here. Vampirism in Vampirium, th there is no cure. There is only one form. We're only talking about when you take a human and turn them into a vampire. Like... When did they canonize that as some kind of religious ritual? Did... Like, I... I'm kind of confused about that. Still, it's meant we've been able to completely stop blood tithings in the short term. Our hope is that down the road, we can set up voluntary tithing stations. Rewarding any citizens that choose to donate as opposed to punishing slaves that resist. Now, this is a good plan. This is actually not bad. Like, you pay a salary, you know, to people. Like, my my job is, um, I give blood to the vampires. Yeah, Sir Theodore, I don't get it. At some point... Culturally, the virus must have worked in that it was acceptable and necessary to convert humans into virus, and that 
they could never be turned back. I, I, and how long has this been going on? The question is, is it like other vampire canon, like, uh, you know, mythology, where you get bit by a vampire and you get turned into a fire? Or is it only through the process of Hamalchemy or whatever they've got going on down in the basement of Castle Dracon that you're converting humans into vampires? Like, it's not just a simple bite, right? There's, like, a lot that goes into it down down in the old basement chambers. Or was that something... Or was that in the basement? Was that only just trying to make weirds? I'm not sure. It will take much for the humans of this region to stop hating the virus. Trust is still further off. Yeah, I don't know how that would happen, but I guess lots of money. My hope is to rebuild my old castle. If the citizens see that the Queen of Old has returned, it will help. Okay, so it's only through Hamalchemy, but it's been going on for a long time. Okay. It sounds like you got a lot to work ahead of you. I hope you can make this work. Okay. Hey, Larry, what's up, my friend? Oh, cool. I'm so glad you're enjoying that. Yeah, Planet Base is super fun. I've agreed with Aferite that, as part of our truce, I am to give you my research on Hamalchemy. No doubt to use against my kind if we ever step out of line. Try to use it on me, however, and I'll gladly tear out your heart. Okay. Vanescula reluctantly gives you a book on the subject of blood essences. Give that a quick read, then talk to me again. You flick through the book on Hamalchemy and discover the art of mixing potions with blood to create blood essences. Um, okay. Contained within this tome are the recipes for powerful blood concoctions. Great. Only those who have earned the trust of vampires past can master hemalchemy. I've earned it. I've earned the trust by resanctifying the salve and being the first human in a long time to kill vampires. Be warned, consuming blood essence in large quantities can have negative and unforeseen effects on the body. Blood essences lasting longer than four hours require a doctor. Vampiric blood essence. Modify your red blood cells to imbibe the oxygen, hemoglobin, and energy from the wounds of organisms that you strike in melee. Four doses of Super Zami. A hundred congealed blood. Hey, Larry. Thanks for subscribing, my friend. <laughs> I should give her a uh, anger management book. Penance Blood Essence. This essence will force a controlled amount of your blood cells and antibodies to prematurely die off in the sacrifice to greater powers. Whoa, you have to burn vire corpses. Yikes. A hundred. Can I ask you this question? And I think I know the answer, but... How did... This Hamalchemy book that I've got right here... This was written by vampires, right? How did they figure out, all right, you need a hundred 
vampire corpses burned. <laughs> like, how did they... How did you get yourself into that? And then, who thought of that? And then who was like, can you imagine being at these conversations where, like, the first vampire was like, maybe we should add one of us, but burned up to a crisp. Are you sure? About yeah, just put him in there. Burn him to ash. Put it in there. Okay. And then they're like, no, it didn't work. We should stop this madness. No. The only reason it didn't work is we haven't burned enough fires. And they just had to keep going until they got to that sweet spot of 100. Oh, it was written by uh, Vanescula's, like, servant's dad? <laughs> exactly. Harambe's... Bob's like, try what? What are you talking about? Wouldn't that be hilarious, Herbie? If it was that? If it was like, yeah, 99 is perfect. Look, I'm not going to write 99 every time. If it's 100 congealed blood, I'm just going to write 100 fire corpses in this recipe book. Oh, wait. Sorry. Let me read it again. Okay. Here we go. Um, Aegis Blood Essence. Platelet activity is increased tenfold and white blood cells will also take on a temporary mineral-like state to make the blood viscous and absorb kinetic energy. All right. Oh, my God. This is 200 corpses. Oh, the next one's three. Oh, boy. You know, I guess it's not that surprising. Once they figured out that 100 burned corpses worked, they all had, like, a shifty-eyed look at each other, like, we're gonna have to get more Vire corpses. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Um, completely alters... This is the reflecting blood essence. Completely alters the structure of white blood cells to exude a force field that reflects energy. Good. Berserk blood essence. This essence will passively increase the amount of testosterone in your blood. Nice. When consumed, it will flush a near-lethal dose of the hormone around your system. <laughs> Real good. Sweet. Tireless blood essence duplicates any epinephrine molecules in your blood plasma to grant a sudden energy boost. Do not activate this blood essence often in short time frames. Ooh, it's Red Bull. Yeah, 500 corpses. Independence of blood. This recipe, once consumed, can temporarily sate a blood-dependent being from the hunger and need for blood to survive. However, ooh, it got ripped out. What's going on here? I've agreed. Right, right, right. Yep, yep. And I suppose... You should have one blood essence as an example, lest your tiny, fragile mind not comprehend. Pick wisely. I'm not handing these things out like candy. She's like, I had to burn 500 corpses. Nick Man, did you say the Berserker potion was actually good? Max, good evening, my friend. I am so sorry to hear that. Now, if I take this, does it give me credit for 500 corpses? Does anybody have any recommendations? Nice, Max. Great job finding alternate solution. Yeah, that's... I've thought about that. 
And that's really cool to uh, record yourself while walking around, getting up from being sedentary and still getting that going. Recording is generally much easier, I find, than streaming. Kiva says, take the berserk. You're telling me, Sir Theodore, that a white knight doesn't drink blood essence? What's the world coming to? Not the one I'd have chosen, but it's your funeral, I suppose. Boom. All right. Look at this. I can wear it. Okay. Interesting. That's a great idea, Max. And if you record it, too, you can always stream it as a rerun, you know? You can, um, like, set it as a YouTube premiere, or you can have it stream on Twitch as a, as a rerun, if you'd like, to get that live effect, too. Me, too, Max. I hate that, too. That's cool, so it's a pocket slot item. So you're telling me, instead of my archaeology journal, I'd have to put that in there? Okay. It's just Old Spice Cologne. All right, what's what other quest should we look at? So should we do the Firemaker's Curse? I guess so, right? All right. No, no. I Okay, so that's a good point. So let's wrap up. We have finished the... Um, the entire... Oh, where are they? Myarchy quest line. And... For me, even though I found some of the motives and agendas and dialogue at the end of River of Blood to be weird and, and not really making sense, I'm still going to say... Um, that the Meyer Key questline in general is one of my favorite in the game. I love these quests. The um, the scale of the quests was awesome. The different places you go, the direness of the situation, the the power. Like seeing Dracon for the first time is one of the iconic RuneScape experiences, at least that I've had so far. I mean, that was like truly a fearsome foe, and everything that went along with you know building up working through the ranks of the myarchy was amazing so i liked the design of the quest too the only thing was the end was a little funky but um no very very good yes um lord of vampirium like fighting dracon on top of the tower was incredible like difficult fight Super scary. Didn't know what was going to really happen there. Um, I mean, Myarchy just getting chopped down one after the next. It's just unreal. Okay. So we're going to go back to timeline. And we're going to go to this. And then, so Firemaker's Curse is our next one. Alright, so... 
Oh yeah, the betrayal was unreal. <laughs> Zago, that's right. Desmondus Van Vaughn. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I mean, there was so much. Yeah, we had to like infiltrate vampire upper crust society and, you know, Yeah, yeah, that was awesome, Sir Theodore. Oh, God, I forgot. I did kill 30 humans to uh, impress get enough cachet to meet, you know, Vanstrom. That, that did happen. It was, it was rough. The Menifo, the Menifos quests I can't do. I can do Crocodile Tears, but I can't do um, Our Man in the North or Fight Club. I don't have the Menifos reputation. A way of healing would be useful. Um... So, food, I mean, that's really all I've got. I'm, I'm hoping that we sent them off to a better life. That's all I could say. Oh yeah, no, I don't really have time to uh, to start the quest. I was just going to situate myself in the right place. Actually, um, let me put some stuff in the bank really fast. Speaking of that, let me put this this away. That that um, sun spear. Okay, I don't think I need Dracon's medallion at the moment. Here's a question I have for you. How do I actually raise... Yeah, Harambe's. I'll have to start... Um, Firemaker's Curse next week so we can really get into it. Right now, I'd just be able to play like 10 minutes of it and go to sleep. Um, I know. I know. Okay, let's put him in... Let's do that. That's a good point, right? Let's, let's filter. Um, or... I don't even know if you could sort by book. Okay. How many books can I put into my bookshelf, right? Um, yeah, they go into my cleanup. So, if they say junk... Oh, you mean all books can be found there and I don't need to add them? That, like, they're already just in there? So I can get rid of, um, okay. I'm just getting rid of these things. Movario's notes. Awesome. Yeah. Man, I got some good stuff. Economy building for dummies. Oh my god. Forgot about that. Oh, that's right. That's right. He will clean it out, won't he? Okay. Anywho. Can you guys tell me, so when we're looking at quests, I have I have to raise my Menifos reputation. How do you do that beyond just skilling in Menifos? What are some ways, do I have to play that like sarcophagus game? 
Menaphos Lodestone? Okay. The thing where you go into the pyramid and you, like, loot the treasures? Is that one? There are events in Menaphos. Shifting Tombs is the best one. And it's always available. But that's actually in this next door place, right? So, like, I'd have to go around. I still haven't opened the gate. Okay. Oh, it's beneath Benefos? Okay, I think I was thinking of the wrong thing. I was thinking of the one on the other side of Sophonheim, like in the, the pyramid there by the Sphinx. Maybe I'm not even thinking of the right thing. Okay. Pyramid plunder, that's what it is. How much reputation am I missing? A lot. I am um, Menaphos Tier 3. So I would need just an ungodly amount of reputation. Now light all the things. Okay. The Statue of Het can allow you to earn Dungeoneering experience from the Shifting Tombs. Okay. Um, no, I don't want uh, Engineering. Lighting this will allow you to earn divination experience. Okay. Yes. Oh, just light everything? Okay. It doesn't take away from my experience. I just need to light them all. Okay. I didn't want to, like, filter out any rep. So it's it's good to have all of these on. Yeah, I, maybe there is, like, only one that you wanted to focus on, you know? And so you would only like that one? I'm not sure. Alright, I think I lit them all. Oh, Ozon's here. Alright. So now what do I do? Do I just enter the shifting tombs? Oh, talk to Ozon? Okay. So about these tombs. You should totally check them out. They're full of treasures. I was more thinking about helping people in returning stolen property. Yeah, right. You want to know about the mad stacks of loot down there and experience aplenty. In fact, if experience is your thing, you should check out these four statues and braziers before heading in. Pick what you want to learn about. Well, I mean, I'm sure that will come in handy as well. You can't hang about down there, though. There's some magic protecting the tombs. They shift all around the, all the time to disorient tomb robbers and protect the treasures and secrets of the pharaohs of old. And whatever Amoscut is doing down there is creating this icky green corruption stuff. I swear, I can't stay down there for more than five minutes before having to come up for fresh air. I dread to think what would happen to me if I stayed any longer. Yeah, Kibo, I think I got the rep from the previous Menaphos quest, which did help me, but I still need a lot. Any questions? Uh, but I see what you're saying. Crocodile Tears will give me some rep, too. Um, no questions. Let's go in, dude. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, how do I accept this?
I accepted. Okay. Ready. Do I need to bring anything? Um, okay. Oh, okay. I went the wrong way. Break the jars. I zigged when I should have zagged. What, Matt? What am I shooting? Death magic? I'm getting experience. This is pretty sweet. Man, I can shoot from far away. Man, I'm blowing this stuff up. Man, I wish I always had this range. Oh, should I mine the corruption or not really? Yeah, I think there is a timer. It's in the upper right. It... Or the upper left, rather. I have like three minutes left. Uh, should I open the sarcophagus? Is it playing memory with the order that I should push these things in? Alright, um, I don't know, I opened it. I'm shooting everything. Alright, we completed it. Um, so, now what do we do? Click one of the chests? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, we got it. Okay, great. Hey, Rossio. Thanks for subscribing, my friend. Um, I'll go over work, Nick Manus. Oh my god, it's a race. I'm not gonna make it. Save yourself, Nick Man.
Man, I wish I could roll again. Um, okay. So, I got a gift, which was a Menophyte gift offering and Desert Pantheon Fragments and Feathers. Um, okay, this is just stuff you can sell, I suppose. Oh. I should have offered the gift and not opened it. Whoops, okay. I thought maybe the, the rep was inside. Well, touche. What do you do with these fragments? You mean 2,000? Okay. All right, well, no, thank you for explaining that. So you just run in there. You break a bunch of pots. Um... You open the chest, open the sarcophagus. Cool. It is. I didn't realize you could do that. Um, well, now I know. Don't open the gift in the future. Um, no, good. That was good. Thank you for explaining that. So, we need to do... Um, I'll do that next time. Just right-click it. The quest that we're going to start next week is Firemaker's Curse. And we're going to go back to oh i remember this we saw them didn't we over on eagle eagles peak um and we'll go talk to them and begin it and get into it nick man said it's going to take like two streams so it's a pretty long quest that's cool um but everyone it is indeed my bedtime so i want to say thank you so much for coming out and we finished all of the myarchy quests that we can do so far anyway and now we also learned how to do the shifting tombs first time here i hope you all have an excellent evening or day and tomorrow on stream we will be playing whatever wins the poll between x4 and traveler's rest it's very close the last i looked heathrun hermy zago nickman sir theodore larry RJ Harambe's Zago Mather Fire Mage Crispy Bacon Fading Kiva Max Jimmy John Hermy Distro. Oh, good point, Sir Theodore. Everyone out there, take care. Have a great one. It looks like it, Heathrun. It looks like that, my friend. <laughs>